hello there guys and welcome back to the channel so today's video is alliance war 3 so this one uh, happened uh some days ago but i've been a bit busy so i hadn't uploaded it uh, yet uh however uh the first uh path in uh, section one basically i'm dealing with all or nothing known so the first fight is uh the thing and i'll admit i have had a couple of beers before this fight but my teammate really wanted me to do this fight before i go to bed so i am not at the, the peak of my playing ability here and it does go a bit kind of like dodgy because uh yeah it's a thing it's all or nothing it's also brute force so i have to keep like hitting him sometimes when i was trying to parry it didn't quite work out and uh still uh i will manage to get out of this fight alive i didn't boost all that much for this fight i think i had like 20 percent champion boost and uh 10 percent attack boost and uh, obviously i had popped in the uh three minute uh, heal boost that heals me at the beginning of the fight and that was definitely quite a bit helpful otherwise the fight would have been a lot closer than it was but hey i got through with quake and quake typically does this fight a lot better it's just that uh, yeah i wasn't really up to the best of my uh, abilities but either way uh, as we can see this alliance wars against g11 i haven't seen this alliance about too much but hey uh, shout out to them why not second fight here is killmonger and we start the fight with the fisticuffs node and again it's like all or nothing as well so my main kind of like point is just to wait out till like can actually apply debuffs to that killmonger and i think i had forgotten to uh add uh, mystic power boost but uh hey it's okay uh, it makes things easier but it's not always kind of like mandatory so here at this point i can see that uh, we still have some dancing about to do uh because the fisticuffs not quite expired plus he has reverb so if possible i would like to avoid that bit of damage here i intercept his heavy attack with my special attack and starting from this point forward kind of like the fight is under control now i can debuff him now he's power locked now his reverb won't really do all that much damage to me either because the amount of damage that reverb does to you always depends on amount of power killmonger has at the time of its activation so if reverb activates when killmonger has pretty much no power it basically deals no damage to you plus obviously limbo uh, helps to recover quite a bit of the damage here you go for another level two he's like one percent one more hit and the fight is over so it did take me a bit but at least i didn't die here and that was kind of like the most important bit to start the war well and uh, that is also kind of like my last fight uh, for uh, the first half of the war next fights are, are already during the next day so i'll quickly boost up i don't remember i think i used the 30 percent boost still at this point and yeah uh, so here we go i didn't add uh, any other boosts so first and foremost i do have a fight against that elsa bloodstone i did heal up my quake prior to uh, going in and uh yeah quake is just gonna deal quite uh comfortably with elsa not much to worry about here uh she does have ability to go unblockable i mean that's the node that she has on but obviously if quake times her concussions right then you can switch that off as well for a while and all in all it just seemed like the best and easiest option now i'm perfectly reasonably can assume that warlock and or magic could have done this fight well as uh, a as well probably magic would have been also a really good option because if i don't have to worry about awaiting her special attacks while she's unblockable then the fight would have been pretty simple but again i just uh figured that i have best chance using quake as in like the least amount of chance that i'm actually gonna mess up and get hit and how to use more potions so and so forth uh so yeah quake it was even though i do have class disadvantage i don't have suicide masteries so I'm not dealing all that much damage. The fight is pretty much over here at one minute mark. I think one more set of aftershocks and uh, Elsa will go down. And the next fight is going to be Archangel. And that was another one of those fights where I was kind of thinking I should probably just bring in Warlock. I don't have much to do with Warlock in this war. But then I, th I thought I have less chance of actually messing up in case I do not follow the unblockable bit so i just brought in quake why not right i know quake isn't like bleed or poison immune so if i get caught i could potentially pay for it quite dearly but again i feel comfortable with quake probably the most comfortable uh with quake than i do with 
any other champion in the game at this point which is something i need to work on i need to kind of like start relying on more different options more frequently and uh kind of like diversify the champions that I use daily but at the same time Quake is just so great and she's so reliable and she does pretty much everything for me that uh, it's kind of like one of those things when it's like a part of you or like you know you never leave your home without uh, your wallet and keys or whatever else I never leave my uh, home in Marvel console champions without Quake if possible at all uh, otherwise it just feels wrong kind of like if you're away from your mobile phone for like half a day and just at this point seems unnatural <laughs> uh, but yeah here we can see that again about a minute and the fight is over even though i don't have suicides because these aren't like the mini boss fights uh, so yeah not too much to stress about here archangel goes down everything works out perfectly fine and at this point additionally i have to add that it was pretty much evident that uh, we are winning the war especially at the time when i was taking these mini bosses so i wasn't overly concerned about dying my main kind of like objective was to clear the map and i will also be taking the boss and uh, that will kind of come into play on the last no mini boss but the point is uh, that uh, yeah we weren't like looking at deaths and stuff like that because our opponents did as well as they could i'm sure uh, but it was just evident that we had won that war and uh I do not have to like go crazy with my boosts and stuff like that. Now I did put on some boosts obviously as we can see here, but uh, I didn't like max boost or anything like that. I didn't change my masteries for these mini boost fights, which I otherwise probably would have done, especially if there was any kind of like time sensitive fights. And uh, Man Thing is one of them. And Man Thing is a uh, tricky dude to quake down because <laughs> he, he, he has just so much health. And especially if he's like stun immune, then it's quite tricky to get him down uh, in those three minutes. Especially if it's like a six star rank three, then there's pretty much timeout guaranteed unless you possibly max boost and max suicides, which I clearly am not doing here. But even a maxed out five star is just so tanky, man. Man, things quite uh, brutal. Fun. I always hate uh, trying to quake down man things in Alliance War or mini boss nodes just because those fights last forever to the point where my kind of like fingers are starting to cramp up and yeah it is what it is i'm certainly not uh, too happy when i see a man thing and everybody just kind of like without saying anything fully pretty much expects me to go and take down that man and uh yeah but hey it's not that the fight is hard not that anything is difficult or harder than normal it's just that it is always extremely long process and you have to kind of like always keep your focus for much longer than you normally do uh, here we can see that two minutes uh, have gone by he's still in like 10 percent obviously the fact that i'm not hitting him and he's not able to activate his region is kind of helpful but with that massive helpful even his willpower heal is really potent uh but yeah so one percent the fight's almost over i still have like 40 seconds i clearly had enough time and uh yeah he's about to go down as soon as those aftershocks kick in and that fight is over now next fight next fight is symbiote supreme on the strike back increased regeneration mini boss and i'm just gonna bring in magic there because uh yeah once you power lock then you absolutely don't have to worry obviously the global is flow so you do need to keep that in mind and that's exactly like how i'm gonna try and play this fight i'm just gonna do one two hits uh see whether he gets that flow and if he does then just try and parry him immediately whilst i build up to my first level two and after i have dropped my like first level two then i'm not too concerned about anything else happening in the fight i know that i'm pretty much safe and all is going to be well and the fight is under control but that flow node really is uh so annoying man just the fact that even when you're using magic, you need to limit yourself to parry in a couple of hits. It's it's not healthy. It's not enjoyable experience. And it's uh, just also not enjoyable way of fighting. Because you're kind of always expecting and you're almost like fearing those critical hits. And yeah, I know they changed it. It is, objectively speaking, like compared to the like last... Uh, season it is a bit easier to deal with there are still obviously certain issues certain problem fights and a couple of mechanics that used to be good before for instance for wasp or 
Doctor Doom or a couple of other champions are not really working anymore because stuns do not uh, remove those stacks anymore. Uh, at the same time, even though it is better, it's still just extremely, extremely annoying and it definitely does not add anything to kind of like the enjoyment of Alliance 4. So I really do hope they just get rid of it completely 100% because if they don't and only reason for love is going to go away if something more annoying comes in its place and which is something I suspect of happening because I don't expect flow to be around forever but realistically I just expect uh, even worse defensive tactics to follow it especially because Kabam has announced that they will increase the amount of defensive tactics now this fight is going to be a fight where I'm going to die because I'm going to mess up and uh, it's quite simple because obviously Nova is uh, debuff immune, so I can't place my concussions on him. And that means every time he dashes in at me, he gains a fraction of power. So it means eventually he does get his like special attacks. And unfortunately, like both of them crit. I knew this is going to happen. I knew that typically I can quake Nova if I can place concussion debuff because then I can shut off his power gain. And here I was like fully prepared to eat a couple of level ones but unfortunately it's just i didn't expect uh both of the hits like to crit and that special attack actually did like 55 percent of the damage so here we can see that he goes for another special attack and part of that crit now is still at 24 percent but i do not know exactly how what happened there probably some of his abilities i generally care that little about nova that i don't read what he does but i got uh hit in the face there with quake but uh, as I mentioned before, that wasn't really all that important. At worst, what it did is cost me some extra potions because of this magic fight where I'm just going to try and play it like super safe and uh, try and finish it off. But I'm going to end up taking like a lot of block damage. It's going to be annoying. Uh, but yeah, that no fight, again, it wasn't obviously the greatest fight. It wasn't the greatest idea. Realistically, I should have placed uh, my Suicide Masteries on already for this fight because that is what I would have used for mojo fight and then i probably would have like managed to quake him down in time if i had suicide masteries and bigger boosts but uh you know what it is what it is i didn't kind of like stress about it too much because as i said we had quite a big lead already in that war so at this point we can see that I took a lot of damage in a block. I did finish out the fight. I didn't die again to him but uh it was quite a fairly kind of clumsy fight if you will and at this point, obviously, I need to heal. And then I remembered that I need to go completely change my mastery setup. I pretty much emptied my potion stash there. So that's where the majority of my glory is going to go for next week. Uh, but yeah, so I changed my masteries. When I deal with a mojo boss, I always take off dexterity. And I max out my double edge and uh, glass cannon. Because uh, if you have recovery mastery, every time you throw a special attack... Uh, with maxed out glass cannon you actually end up healing quite considerable amount of health and that kind of like can let you take more block damage and uh, that is kind of like the thinking behind that obviously you also end up mitigating all of the damage through limbo plus you net uh some sizable plus as i mentioned and here we can see that obviously that increases my special attack damage which helps me deal more damage uh to mojo which helps me gain more power via mystic power boost and just makes the whole fight uh quite a bit uh simple and quite a bit easier and quicker and if the fight is quicker obviously you have less chance of making an error thus you have higher chance of actually finishing the boss uh in solo and uh yeah at this point uh, i feel like the fight is quite well under control i how power lock active at pretty much all times to find my openings typically with dashbacks or baiting out heavies you do need to be really careful baiting out those heavy attacks because he has like a super quick recovery time again since i do not have dexterity i need to be like on point with like dashing away from those heavy attacks as well and but not having dexterity obviously prevents me from actually dealing with any of the degen that mojo has now this mojo is unduped uh so that's also kind of like neat and nice but here you can see that the fight's pretty much over i did end up making a mistake but luckily limbo was active and here another one and go for level two not even that and the fight is done but yeah that is it for today's war we did end up winning as i mentioned it and i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did then hit that like button hit that sub button and um see ya